exceptional young people who are here to talk to us about the work that they're doing, their understanding of this world, and give us a few tips, perhaps, or toolkit of what we can do to contribute to making the planet better for everyone of us. Karibuni sana. Now we have, uh, a wait, you, you didn't have these glasses when we started. <laughs> now I do. Now you do. Can, can you actually see? <coughs> see you. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> well, I, well, I can, I can. So we have uh, Paul Mutuku Kaluki, Karibu Sana. You're from uh, something called Keen International. Yes. All right. You're the director, I believe. I'm the executive director. Executive director. Karibu Sana, yes. welcome to the home of untold stories. And then we have Daniel Kirongodi. Yes. Right. You're from uh, something called the Global Landscapes Forum, but Nairobi version, yeah? Yes. You'll tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Karibu Sana. Thank you so much. Straight off, uh, Daniel, talk to me a little bit about this. What, what, is, what is the GLF and what, what do you guys do? <clears throat> so GLF, uh, Global Landscapes Forum, uh, is, a, as it said, global platform that uh, basically connects uh, grassroots organizations, which are organizations that are actually actively participating in environmental activities to international stakeholders, donors, uh, for, and basically just availing the resources they need to actually implement this uh, kind of uh, projects. So I am the fundraising and uh, partnerships director. So, so the money guy. So I'm the money guy. <laughs> money guy. And the networks guy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the money guy and networks. Yeah. What about you, Kaloki? What, what do you do at Keen International? Yes, so Keen International is an international nonprofit. Um, we started in 2020, and the whole point is, number one, Africa has resources. And young people are one of the biggest resources. Indigenous communities in Africa are also one of the biggest resources. <laughs> So we bring together all these amazing uh, solutionists from the ground to actually have a place where they belong. And then we discuss issues on climate change and discuss the solutions that we actually need to deliver uh, both at the grassroots level, but also at the national, regional, and global scale. So we do have a few programs that we work with them to ensure that we actually front the case for young people in Kenya and Africa to the rest of the world. And also really trying to bring that narrative that Africa is not a poor, the dark continent. Africa has more resources, it has solutions, and it has some brighter future. So we need to also, you know, put that message forward. And so Keen comes in to just push that positive uh, narrative and ensuring that you actually tell the world the new perspectives about the Africa that you want. Right. And I mean, you've... you've both of you have touched a little bit on that in your introduction, but talk to us about where is, what need is there that requires people like you to step in? What, what gap did you see okay. that, that prompted you to want to do this, dedicate your life and, and your time to doing this? Let's start with you, Daniel. Um, <clears throat> I think, first of all, I should start by saying I'm not even an environmental professional. I am an architect by profession in the youth. Um, so the gap came and the gap I've noticed is we have a lot of people in Kenya. I think we're a very environmental conscious country to start with, but we lack the resources to actually um, implement a lot of things. And resources is not even limited to money. Sometimes it's knowledge. Sometimes it's even how, who are the actors, who, who are the stakeholders, like awareness, basically. So we, we just here to, uh, the, the gap basically came about with that knowledge, the, the lack of knowledge and awareness of how exactly to move to create uh, impactful change. Because I will plant a tree in my compound, but who will plant a tree in the park? Who plants the trees in the forests? Who plants the trees in the national parks? Who reclaims the environment when infrastructure destroys it? So the gap has come from that. And youth, as youth people, would want to execute it, but how do we really get go about it? So that's where now uh, organizations like uh, mine and uh, Kaluki's come in. We basically try to avail all those things because um, the Global North uh, basically have a lot of uh, research and information on this, and they just borrowed, got it from here. The, the, a lot of the sites are here. So why, what, so it's basically we're just bringing back what, they, what they've understood about our nature home. Yeah. Right. What about you, Kaluki? What's your perspective on where the gap is and why you need to step in? Two things for me. Uh, the first is actually the late Professor Angari Matai. I know maybe you've heard it so many times that she's my icon, she's, you know, my inspiration, but actually she is for me. Um, as a child, you know, seeing Wangari Madai fighting for the environment, and at that time, it's almost all the people that are actually out in the streets. You never saw many young people joining them. Mm -hmm. And so I made it my life mission to actually pursue environmental uh, science and undertake some environmental practice, and, and that's what I'm doing right now. 
So that's one of the gaps that I saw actually making a case for young people to see environmental conservation as a fancy, sexy, and you know, a modern thing for you to make a career out of. And the other thing is to why actually we even started Kinos um, around 2019, 2020. There is the rise of these, what I call the climate celebrities in Africa, mm -hmm. that actually, you know, the Fridays for Futures movement and a lot of these yeah. campaigns will come and you'll simply just get bored in the day or in your bedroom and you just write some placard that, you know, the oceans are rising so away yes. and that the is, earth is dying. Yeah, so earth, actually, yeah. at times there is no message behind it or inspiration, but you just write it's it just and trendy. then you become yeah. a keyboard warrior, you know. Yeah. And, and so <coughs> I, we, we founded Kin with my co-founder Kevin Mtai to actually help eliminate that, that show young people it's not enough to just be a keyboard warrior, actually do something on the ground. And it's not a bad thing for you to actually do social media advocacy, but it needs to be informed, it needs to have a structure, it needs to have a foundation that then helps even our policy makers and leaders see the essence as to where we are doing advocacy and campaigns. So those two things are the gaps that we saw and we are trying to close through our, our projects.